very often we'll have clients who will ask their suppliers or maybe their internal production people to supply them with a CPK index so that they can be assured that the parts that are being produced will function correctly. And uh, we hold that by itself the CPK index doesn't inform you very much and in some cases can be out and out dangerous. The fundamental problem is that the normal use of the quality indices, PPK, CP, uh, CPK, P sub P, is to predict how things are going to work in the future. Are these parts that have been made going to do the job? And if you think about it for a moment, unless the data are drawn from a stable and predictable process, there's no reason to expect that the index is going to make a successful prediction for you. Has nothing at all to do with how the indices are calculated has everything to do with the nature of the process from which they're drawn. So fundamentally, anybody that gives you any of the quality indices also owes you a control chart and evidence that the process is stable and predictable, which is the same as to say that it's in control. Now, after you get over that hurdle and you've got data from a stable and predictable process, I hold that C CPK is still not your best choice. Uh, if you're just going to rely on one of the indices, then PPK is a lot better choice for a couple of reasons. Uh, let's uh, pull up this data that I've uh, entered here, cover up my mug. And uh, if we look at this, we've got a process that uh, is not breaking any of the rules, so we would think, yeah, that's probably stable and predictable. And as we look down here at our quality indices, we've got PPK and CPK, as well as the others here. And <clears throat> as we would expect with a stable and predictable process, PPK and CPK are about equal. Okay, so um, why do I then object to uh, CPK? Well, uh, CPK is subject to manipulation. Uh, let's go down here and pick, this is the same data set. I've just changed the order of a few of the uh, points, all right? And notice <clears throat> that my PPK has not changed, but by swapping around the order of a few points, I've been able to inflate my CPK a little bit. Now, if we don't want to do that manually, <clears throat> we can really manipulate the data by simply sorting it in order, which is what I've done here, and I get this ridiculous looking uh, process behavior chart. So what do I get down here? My PPK is still 0.63, hasn't changed a bit. Look what's happened to my CPK. It's 6.89. Now, if you're, if you're relying on the CPK index, uh, you've just got overwhelming evidence that this process is just never going to uh, produce a bad part. And we know that's contrary to what we have, uh, have seen by looking at the data and looking at the uh, PPK. In fact, uh, the quality indices were made to be used in concert. And let me just uh, illustrate that a little bit. If you put them together in a block like this, if you can draw equal signs down, if uh, C, P, and P sub P are about equal, and if CPK and PPK are about equal, <clears throat> then your process is reasonably free from uh, extraordinary variation or what we call special cause. Now, if I uh, change the equal signs so that they go left to right, then that tells me that my process is centered. So if all I have is the indices and no chart, I can still get a lot of information by looking at this. Now, there's a third thing that we can get out of the indices if we use them in concert. <clears throat> That's this. If you can draw your equal sign diagonally, 
This way, your process is about as good as good as it's going to get without a major overhaul. Um, there are the easy fixes of centering and removing special cause. Uh, what we're seeing here with the diagonal equal sign is the easy fixes probably aren't going to uh, help you very much. So the indices were really invented to be used in concert, and if you do it that way, you'll get something that is, is more useful. And if you only have one index, I would recommend that you work with PPK.